Audubon, Michigan brings with it the time-honored tradition of jack-o'-lantern carving. So it was only a matter of time till the tradition of simple carving turned into a more elaborate fine art through the creativity of a northern Michigan man, Ray Villafane of Bel Air. Ray teaches art classes K-12 through at Bel Air area schools in northwestern Lower Michigan and found pumpkins to be an abundant medium in the area. That discovery has developed into an annual display by Ray and his art students of virtual three-dimensional works of carving art. Michigan Magazine visited Bel Air High School one early autumn morning to witness Ray's talent and some of the extraordinary work his ninth through 12th grade students were creating. Shortly before class, we talked with Ray about how he first discovered the potential fine art in pumpkins. About five years ago, uh, I was living in Ohio and I brought a pumpkin home to carve and I just got graduated a couple years prior, graduated uh, college and I figured, well, you know, why, why not, you know, I used to just do the triangles on them like everyone else and uh -huh. so then we tried carving it like I would, like, like I say, clay or wood and I, I took a knife to it and it didn't look like these, but it kind of—I mean, it—it it, uh, it came out right at the time. I, I thought it was neat, and uh, that was that. And a few years later, I moved up here, and a uh, kid wanted to know if he could paint the pumpkin in class. I said, "Yeah, bring it in." And they brought a couple in. And I said, "Well, I'm gonna try carving it." And I tried to try to do it again, and it was a little better. And before I know it, other students liked this. They brought in more pumpkins, and I experimented with various tools, and what turned into a couple of pumpkins. Uh, escalate into students to bring in too many pumpkins uh, I would I would come up to the classroom and, uh, and I still do uh, uh -huh. usually as a pumpkin there's pumpkins either students I don't even have or don't know standing with the uh, door waiting you know asking if I could carve a pumpkin for them or or there be there's a, usually a pumpkin there with a little note uh, Mr. Villafane can you carve this one for me what I've noticed also, it doesn't matter what the size or what the configuration is of this pumpkin, you don't use stencils uh, and you don't use automatic or uh, powered tools. Uh, what I use is a, a metal loop, similar to like what a clay okay. clay loop. So that's one of the essential tools. Yeah, this is, this is uh, I say 90% of it's done with this. Then there's some smaller versions, the store board, these are, like I said, working for clay. Uh, various shapes for, for, for different areas, you know, and as you, as you do more of these, you kind of yeah you kind of know which one for what need you have I mean some are round uh, this triangle and that one's kind of squared off okay and then like, like a paring knife uh, sharp end is right here as opposed to there's a dull dull side there and this is what I'll do at the very end um, pumpkins are, are kind of translucent so you need to exaggerate all the the shadows on it or else uh, the, it, the, the light it won't capture the shadows of, of a face, so you want to get in a little deeper with the uh, with the smile marks and uh -huh. various areas. So I use a, a paring knife there. But okay. I'd say most of, most of it's done with this. Most of and, it's done with that. Yeah. And, and when you start a project like this, do you know right offhand when you look at the pumpkin, the figurine, or uh, what the pumpkin is shaped like? Do you know in your mind what you want that to be? Sometimes I go, I buy pumpkins wholesale from a uh, farm bolts. Uh -huh. uh, farm here in Ellsworth and uh, I usually I get to walk the pumpkin patch before the pumpkins are picked and pick out which ones I want and, and he what saves I, them for you. Yeah and what I look for are ones that are heavy for its size which means it'll have a thick meat to it. Thick skin. Yeah, yeah. Oh. and I look for something that has got a point coming towards it. Uh, I don't I don't usually use the ones typically everyone wants the perfect round ones they're hard yeah. to put a face on because they tend to be flat no if character. I, well, I, I, I need a point on it, so if I want to get the face, I can go around, get the tip of the nose and, and work I around, see. if I'm doing a person. Uh -huh. Usually I get something with a point, or once in a while you find, find a pumpkin that's got some, uh, with a vine, makes some deep uh, cuts into it, and I always grab those because you can make kind of lips out of those, where the yeah. vine goes, and, and you kind of make a face. And, and there's a bunch, lots of things you could, you, you know, you can kind of make out of them. You just got to look at them for a while. But, uh... I can't just usually, I don't just pick up a pumpkin and say, okay, I'm going to make, or say, I want to make a uh, pirate and just pick up any pumpkin. Like, there is a lot of choosing involved and, okay, uh, does this, I can kind of see when I look at the pumpkin, is that going to be the shape I need? And as I work, sometimes it changes. Um, while I'm in the middle of carving, if, if the pumpkin tends to want to do something else, I kind of let it go that way.
Do you have in mind though when you when you start? Uh, uh, I mean, are, are these supposed to be characters that you have seen, or are, are these uh, characters that uh, you just let the hands and the flow of the mind and just? I'll some I'll use a they don't look like me, but I'll use I'll use a mirror to, to get some of the uh, so I get the gesture of the face like this one here. Uh, but I'll use a mirror for for some of the the marks and uh, on where some of the wrink I'll make that similar face and I kind of look for those wrinkles in it to see where they go and it, and it makes for a much more believable uh, pumpkin face. Well, this is a season. I mean, uh, this is seasonal, definitely. I mean, yeah. it's uh, what? You, you start in this, what, in September or October? Uh, yes, and I, as soon as I get pumpkins, I, I start itching to do it. Um, and I'm kind of glad that they don't last. A lot of people say, <laughs> a lot of people say, uh, you know, isn't there something you could spray on it or do something to it? And but that I don't worry about it. a fresh idea for the following year. Yeah, I, I kind of like, let them, it's like ice carving, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, what would, you'd rather have a, a, an ice swan rather than a plastic one for a wedding. And, and I think the same thing with pumpkins. If you seal them, it's fun, and it's also fun to see them go. They, they take on a different life outside. They'll last, uh, if it's cool outside, they'll last a couple of weeks at least, and then they'll start changing, which is always a neat part after that, you know. What's been the most fascinating thing of, the, of, the, of pumpkin carving to you? Uh, boy, it, I, I, just coming up with a, a different face. I mean, yeah. uh, I've done the pirate before, but uh, people like it, and so I do it again. But whenever I do a, a different one I haven't done before, it's it's always neat. Uh, I, I've done everything from a football play. I'll leave the the rind for the face mask and the helmet, and I'll kind of carve behind the rind. So there's a football play behind the pumpkin helmet. Um, it's it, I, I like all aspects of it, really. Um, I, I kind of tend to like the pumpkins that don't have, e like this is kind of impressive. It, it's, it's neat, but it's not one of my favorites because it looks like a nice carving on a pumpkin, whereas these here look like the pumpkins coming to life, sort of, because it kind of blends right into the pumpkin. Yes. And w when you have the ears separate, uh, it looks like a piece of artwork on, on the pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I kind of right. like, I yeah. tend to like faces yeah. like like those here and you've been doing this for how long now Ray? oh serious like this this would be the third year third year this starting the third and year. i'll bet the students from year to year look forward to this there yeah are some yeah. students that probably look forward to it oh yeah uh, at the elementary I, I go down there and it's always a it's always fun to see their reaction and and especially the even younger you know yeah. kindergarten first yeah. grade and they kind of, they don't know, they, they, a lot of times they haven't seen something, you know, the kindergarten or first grade where the face starts to come out and I, I usually tell them the face is already in there, I'm just helping the, the person get out of there so they <laughs> can breathe the, a little. Get yeah. out of the pumpkin so they can yeah. breathe, right? I can, I can teach someone how to do a simple face. I mean, you know, anyone, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I can teach them how to do a, a very simple face. Um, this tool here takes a little getting used to. Um, and, but once you get used to using this, uh, it's it's quite it, it makes it's a lot easier than using a knife. What has been the most difficult pumpkin for you? What has been the most the difficult skull. Uh, sculpting? The skull. The skull. Okay. Yeah, uh, time consuming. I don't know how difficult, but time consuming. Um, well, I, it's it's very it's very uh, right now. It's real cold because I have it refrigerated. But so once it warms up, you realize how thin some of this air yeah. these areas are, and uh, well, that, that that is detail too. It's it, you know you, you have to go. The problem I had when I first started is I was being very timid and uh, busting through. Because to get a good pumpkin, you, you have to really try and get as deep as you can. Because uh -huh. that's going to make everything come out. It's going to make the tip of the nose and stuff come out. So that when you view it from the side, you also have uh, a profile to right. it so it's not flat. Well, Ray, uh, what you're doing here in beautiful Bel Air, Michigan, is, uh, I think, uh, real neat. And uh, teaching the young uh, students uh, this wonderful medium of pumpkin sculpting, or sculpting, or carving. Uh, and uh, who knows, it might be one of these masters uh, uh, pumpkin sculptors come out of, out of your class. And we thank you so much for being part of Michigan Magazine, and we wish you continued success. Thank you.